Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today. To always, always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now just to give him the thanks right now. Just to give him the praise right now. And always give God the glory. We thank you for this beautiful, blessed day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you for being in our life right now today, God. We thank you for touching us and healing us in every area of our body, God. Because, God, you know exactly what we are going through. You know exactly what we are facing. But, Father God, we are calling out your name right now today. We are calling out your name for help. We are calling out your name for for. for for a favor today, God. Because, God, we can't do it by ourselves, God. We don't know what to do, God, without you, Jesus. So we are asking you in your name right now for you and only you, Jesus, for you to continue to guide and direct our every footsteps. Father God, we are asking you right now today to touch us right now today, God, to put us in the right place at the right time, God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, all we have is our faith, God. We don't understand what's happening, God. And sometimes, God, we seem like that you have forgotten about us. For, Father God, right now, we are telling you the only thing we have right now is our faith. The only thing that we have right now is our trust. The only thing that we have right now is our hope. And, Father God, we are putting it into you, God. Father God, you continue to do what you do best, God. You continue to navigate us, God. Because, God, we know that you are God who does not make mistakes. Father God, we know whatever it is that you have started in our life, that you will complete it. We know one thing for sure, whatever it is that you are acting on, God, that you will make, that you will prevail, that it will come through, God. But it's not on our time. It's on your time, God. And Father God, we need some answers right now today, God. Father God, we're asking you right now today to reveal anything to us, God. That we need to see and hear from you, God. Father God, please forgive us for any wrong thing we have done. Father God, as we repent of our sins to you right now today, God, because we are sinners. Father God, please forgive myself, my sisters, and my brothers for any wrong thing that we have done. If there's anything we've done wrong, God, in the sight of your eyes, please forgive us. If there's anything we've done wrong, God, that was not set right in your heart, please forgive us, God. Purify us right now today, God. Clean us right now today, God. Thank you for cleaning us as white as snow. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore, God. Father God, we do fall short, God, and we do make mistakes. So it's very important, my sisters, it's very important, my brothers, that we must repent. And I know right now today, a lot of preachers today, they never mention this in their in they sermons about repentance. You have to have repentance. And when you have a man of God, and when he is saying about repentance, that lets you know that he really cares about you, my brothers. That lets you know he really cares about you, my sisters. And that actually lets you know that he's really a man of God. So, Father God, we're saying you have your way in your house right now today, God. Father God, we lift you up right now today in thanks and praise and glory, God. We know that you're still on the throne. We know that you're still performing miracles and wonders each and every day and every last one in our life, God. Father God, we want to say that we trust you, God, no matter what it looks like, God. We know right now we're in our dark times right now today, God. But Father God, we got hope in our dark times. We got trust in our dark times. We got faith in our dark times. Knowing, God, that you're going to come through. Knowing, God, that you're going to make a way out of this situation. Right now, some of us right now today, God, we, we're in a mess right now. But God, as we cast our situation, our concerns and our anxieties on you, God. Because your word says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, that you care for every last one of us, God. So, God, we are handing you our situation. We are handing you our cares. We are handing you our anxieties. We are handing you our mess that we're in this dark place, God. And whatever situation that we put ourselves in, God, you got the strength to get us out. And I believe not declare right now today, God, that you is getting us out of this mess that we put ourselves in. Father God, we want to say that you are everything, that you reign forever. Father God, we believe in you, because we believe in your words and your promises. Your words and your promises are everlasting and everlasting. And you are a man that you should not lie. 
And you cannot go back on your words. You cannot go back on your promises because you have a command to bless those who believe and trust in you. Father God, I believe and trust in you. My sisters, they believe and trust in you. My brothers, they believe and they trust in you, God. Your words also tell us in the book of 2 Timothy verse, chapter 2, verses 1 and 11, that you cannot disown yourself, God, because you have faith. And, and when we remain faithful, faithless, you remain faithful to those who remain faithful to you, God. So, Father God, we are saying thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, God. Father God, we are coming to you right now today to let you know, Father God, that we are available for praise right now. That we are available for service right now. We are available to do whatever it is that you have called us to do, that you chose us to do, and also consider us to do. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to have a seat at your table right now today. Father God, I want to say this. Thank you, Father God. Because your words say in the book of Matthew, verses 18, 18, verse 19, with two or more gathered in your name, that you are in the midst. So right now, Father God, I know that you're in the midst in our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our telephones right now. I know that you're in the midst of our laptops right now, our desktops right now, our iPads right now, or whatever gadget that we have that we're watching your service on YouTube. We know, Father God, that you're in the midst right now today, God. Father God, you touch down in your place right now today, God. You have your way with every last one of us right now today, God. You do what you do best right now today, God. Because, Father God, as long as you are for us, it doesn't matter who's against us, God. No weapon. Formed against us, it shall not and it will not prosper. It doesn't matter how many weapons form against us. It's not going to do nothing and it will not prevail. Father God, I'm asking you right now today to speak to every last one of your sons and your daughters, God. Father God, we came in one way, but we're going to go out another way, full and satisfied on your words and your promises, God. Father God, let your love and your glory move through us right now today. Let your words move through us right now today, God. Allow your presence to be lifted up in our homes right now today, God. Because it is your love that's in this house. It is your faith that's in this house. It is your presence that's in this house, God. And God, I know. I know that you're about to do a new thing in my brother's life today. I know that you're about to do a new thing in my sister's life today. I know that you're about to do a new thing in my life today, God. Father God, we still holding on to your hands, God. We ain't letting go. Father God, we ain't taking no for an answer, God. We had came too far to be turning back away now. Father God, we are focused on you, God. Father God, your word said that we could not slip on the rock that we are standing on. And we know you are the rock that we are standing on, God. Father God, keep us steady. Keep us focused. Keep us balanced, God. And Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this anointing message that we about to receive right now today, God. And we just thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you for everything that you're about to do. We thank you for coming to our life. We thank you for another day, God. Because this is the day that you have made. Myself, my brothers, my sisters. And we are so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Glory to your name, God. There's no name better than your name. There's no name sweeter than your name. There's no name movable than your name, God. Father God, we want to say thank you. And we want to thank you and thank you for who you are, what you have done, and what you stand for. We thank you today, God. Hallelujah. We glorify your magnify and shout out your holy name right now today, God. Oh, Holy, oh, Holy, oh, holy Spirit, thank you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for showing up and showing out in my life right now today. I thank you for who you are and what you've done, what you're about doing in that life. In your holy, precious name, amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just can't thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful, blessed day today. 
I can't thank enough for this anointing word today, for this beautiful, blessed message that we about to receive today. I just can't thank enough for the air that we're able to breathe right now today. I just can't thank enough, Jesus, for your grace and your mercy. I just can't thank enough for our health and our strength. I can't thank enough for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table. The clothes and shoes that you have put on that back. I just can't thank enough, Jesus, how you provided. I just can't thank enough, Jesus, how you still got it and directing us. I just can't thank enough, Jesus, how you making the way out of no way. I just can't thank enough, Jesus, for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now today. I can't thank enough for the Holy Spirit right now today that is moving through us right now today. I just can't thank enough, Father God, how you moving mountains and I'm being half right now today, and we don't even realize it. I just can't thank enough, Jesus, for your words. I can't thank enough, Jesus, for your promises. I just can't thank enough for your love. I just can't thank enough for your presence. I just can't thank enough for your faith. I just can't thank enough for how you giving. I just can't thank enough for how you healing. I just can't think how you providing. I just can't think of for the open doors. I can't think of for the door that you have closed. I can't think of for our blessing, our breakthrough, our anointing, our deliverance, our double portion, our more than enough. I just can't think of for the rain that's coming, God. I can't think of for the connection, God. I can't think of for the resources, God. I just can't think of for your love, God. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify and I magnify and I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. Praise your holy name, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. 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 Glory to Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I give my love, my life to you, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I surrender to you, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. In your holy, mighty name. Amen, amen. Let's get into this word, my brothers and my sisters. Can you please turn your Bibles to Hebrews 11? And we're going to read verse 6. That's Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to read verse 6. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen, hallelujah. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. A lot of you right now today, you're blaming Jesus for everything. Right now, I want you to date my brothers. I want you to date my sisters. And you know exactly who you are. I want you to look yourself in the mirror. And really be honest with yourself. 100% honest with yourself. And ask yourself. The problem is not Jesus. The problem is you. And the reason why the problem is you. Because you don't have enough faith in Jesus. You don't trust him enough. It's not, it's not like Jesus is not going to come through for you. It's not like Jesus is gonna, Jesus not going to do what he says he's going to do. The problem with you is the reason why Jesus is not moving in your life. The reason why things are not happening in your life. The reason why you have not seen anything. The reason why Jesus can't use you is because you don't have no faith. If you turn your Bible to James chapter 2, it'll tell you, faith without work is dead. You cannot please Jesus if you don't have faith. If you don't seek him, you cannot please him. So how in the world do you expect Jesus to be there for you when you don't believe in him? How do you expect Jesus to be there for you when you don't believe in his words? How do you expect Jesus to be there for you when you don't believe in his promises? The problem is not Jesus, my brothers and my sisters. The problem is with you. If you don't have faith, you cannot please that man. 
point blank period. The only way that Jesus is will move mountains, uh, uh, the only way that Jesus will move mountains out of your life is faith. The only way that Jesus will come through is with faith. The only way that Jesus will talk to you is with faith. The only way that Jesus will reveal anything to you, you have to have faith. Faith is something that you believe that you don't even see yet, that you already know that it's yours. That's what faith is all about. You walk by faith and not by sight. When you believe in something so bad, even though that you don't even see it, even though that you don't even realize it, that right there, that what pleases God. That what that moves God. When you believe in something, you don't even see it, but you know it's yours. Without a doubt, you don't care what a hater is saying. You don't care what a doubter is saying. You don't care what a naysayer is saying. You don't care what the enemy is saying, but you are still moving. By faith. And when you are moving by faith. And you are seeking him. Because the word of God tells us. In the book of Matthew verse 6. Verse 33. That we need to seek him first. And when you seek Jesus first. That's having faith. When you come into your room and praying. That's having faith. When you are doing what God has called and chosen you to do. Even though you don't see things happening. Even though you don't see things moving. That is called faith. And when you have faith. God say, I can move on your behalf. So if God is moving on your behalf, that means but God, God is pleased with you. If God is not moving on your behalf, and if God is not opening up doors, if you are not seeing any results, the problem is not Jesus. The problem is you. And the reason why the problem is you is because you're coming to Jesus with dead faith. What can he do with dead faith? He can't do nothing with that. You can't move with dead faith. It's nothing there. Nothing doesn't exist with dead faith. And a lot of you right now today, that's how you come to Jesus. With dead faith. With a whole lot of accusations. With a whole lot of problems. Blaming Jesus for this. Blaming Jesus for that. And the whole time the problem is you. It's not Jesus. It's you. And you know exactly who you are today. Right now, I want y'all to be honest with y'all self. I want you to be real with yourself now. And I know that's something that some of y'all right now today is hard for y'all to do, to be honest with yourself. I know that's something that's hard for y'all, a lot of y'all guys to do right now today, to keep it real with yourself. And say, so you know what? I've been blaming Jesus for something. It wasn't even his fault. It was my fault. I was blaming him for something that I didn't believe in. I was blaming Jesus for something I didn't have trust in. I was blaming Jesus for something I really didn't even have hope in. And I was expecting some results. You cannot continue to do the same thing and expecting that you're going to get results. You're not. The only way that you're going to get results is by having faith. And when you have faith, Jesus said, I am pleased with my son. I am pleased with my daughters. He said, now I can move on his behalf. He said, now I can move on her behalf. It's because you have something. And when you have faith, that's when the enemy will attack you. And you wonder why the enemy is not attacking y'all right now today, my brothers and my sisters. The enemy cannot attack something that they don't, they don't see. The enemy cannot attack something if it's not there. Because if you turn your Bible back to Isaiah 54, verse 17, the word of God said, no weapon formed against you should not prosper. The only way a weapon will form against you is what? Faith. If you don't have faith, there's no weapon formed against you. There's no haters against you. There's no doubters against you. There's no, no naysayers against you. And most of all, the enemy is not messed with you because you don't have nothing to be attacked on. But when you have something to be attacked on, when you have something to be moved on, it's because you have faith. The enemy only loves to kill, steal, and destroy because of your faith. Come on, somebody. You ain't telling me nothing. But I'm here today to tell somebody right now today. The problem is not Jesus. It's never been Jesus. The problem was you the whole time. Now it's time for you to get your stuff correct. So you know what? The problem was me. You've been blaming Jesus this whole time and the problem was never him. You've been accusing Jesus this whole time and the problem was not him. You've been cursing him out the whole time. For what reason? You should have been cursing yourself out because the problem was you. Because you didn't have no faith. 
Faith is having the size, size of the seed of a mustard seed. So if you got that much faith, the smallest seed in the world, you can please Jesus with. But some of you right now today, you don't even have that much faith. So how in the world you expect Jesus to show up and show out in your life when you don't have faith as size of a mustard seed? That's the smallest seed in the world. Now, come on, somebody. You got to keep it real. You got to believe in Jesus, knowing that he exists. You have to believe in Jesus, knowing that he is still on the throne, that he is still performing miracles and wonders. But the thing about it, everything operates on Jesus' time, not our time. And I think that's why a lot of us right now today, we get confused at. That's why a lot of us right now today, we try to blame Jesus at because we're expecting Jesus to show up right then and there. In the moment that we don't see it, the first thing we do, we walk out of this life. We say, no, way, we done with you, Jesus. Jesus, we call on to your name. We ain't seen nothing. We cried out. We still ain't seen, we, we ain't seen no happiness yet. We ain't seen no action yet. So I ain't believing you no more, Jesus. So, Jesus, I'm going to blame you for everything. I'm going to blame you why I lost my job. I'm going to blame you why I lost my car. I'm going to blame you why I lost my husband. I'm going to blame you why I lost my wife. I'm going to blame you why I lost my, my family member. You're blaming somebody because you stopped believing in something. Jesus never stopped believing in you. It was you who stopped believing in him. It was you who stopped believing in his words. It was you who stopped believing in his promises because the word of God said his words and his promises are everlasting, everlasting. Numbers 23 verse 19 says that he's a man that he shall not lie. Point blank period. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. If he's acting on something, he got to come through because why? He has a command that comes from his father that he got to bless those who seek him. He got to bless those who trust in him. He got to bless those who have faith and hope in him. He got to do what he said he got to do. Second Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 11 say he cannot, he cannot disown himself. Regardless, if we will remain faithless, he always got to remain faithful to his words. He always got to remain faithful to his promises. He always got to remain faithful to what his father has commanded him to do. So the problem is not Jesus. The problem is you. Come on, somebody. You need to get off your feet and get some faith now. If you want Jesus to move in your life, and if you want Jesus to open up some doors, and if you want Jesus to if you want Jesus to guide and direct you every footstep, you must have some faith. You must believe in him. You must trust in him. You must know that he's still on the throne. You must know that he's a man that he should not lie. It starts from you, my brothers. It starts from you, my sisters. And I believe right now today, I declare right now today, that somebody's going to get back on their feet. They're going to say, Jesus, I'm sorry for blaming you. They're going to say, Jesus, I'm sorry for accusing you. Jesus, I'm sorry for cursing you out. I'm sorry, Jesus, for walking out of your life. The problem was never you in the first place. The problem was me because I didn't see things happen on my time. So, Jesus, I gave up on you. Jesus, I cursed you out. Jesus, I didn't like you no more. But, Jesus, I'm here today to let you know that I'm sorry. And Jesus has already forgiven you. Jesus has already forgiven you, my brothers. Jesus has already forgiven you, my sisters. The problem is you. It was never Jesus. The only way that you can move Jesus is with faith. That's the only way you can move him. If you don't have faith, it's impossible to move that man. It's impossible for that man to show up in your life. It's impossible, it's impossible for that man to show you the good things that he's going to bring to your life if you don't have faith. It is like a train. A train cannot move if you don't have the right coil in there. A car cannot drive if you don't have no gas in there. A bike cannot, cannot pedal if you don't have the chain around it. A computer cannot come on and work if you don't have the core or the keypad. A phone cannot work if you don't have a battery. That's the same thing as faith. You cannot move Jesus if you don't have faith. If you don't have that number one greeting, how you expect Jesus to move in your life? If you don't have that number one greeting, how you expect Jesus to show up and show it in your life? The number one greeting lives inside of you. It's time for you right now today, my brothers. It's time for you right now today, my sisters. You must activate your faith. And how do you activate your faith? I'm glad you asked me. 
You activate your faith by trusting Jesus. Say, Jesus, come into my life to be my Lord and Savior Christ. And once you say that and you say, Jesus, I believe in you. I trust in you. I got my faith and hope in you. Automatically, you just activated your faith right then and now. And you got to say, Jesus, I don't know how this is going to work. But Jesus, I'm trusting you. Jesus, I don't know when you're going to come through. But Jesus, I'm trusting you. You're activating your faith. It is like when you're believing in something. You can't expect everybody to believe what you believe in as long as you believe it. And Jesus is for you. That's all that matters. Too many of y'all right now today, you're expecting too many people to believe in you and root for you, but they always would leave you hanging. The word of God says, man will lie to you. Man will disappoint you. Man will leave you hanging, but Jesus will never disappoint you. Jesus will never leave you hanging. So you must believe in what you are putting out. You got to believe it. If you're investing in yourself, you believe every dollar that you're investing in. You may not see the return yet, but you don't know what Jesus is doing behind the scenes. Because you don't see nothing does not mean it's not happening. Because you don't see nothing does not mean it's not working. But if you believe that Jesus will come through, if you believe that your, your investment is going to pay off, it's going to pay off. Why is it going to pay off? Because of your faith. That's how it's going to pay off. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in his words? Do you believe in his promises? Do you believe that he exists right now? Do you believe that he is still on the throne? And if you believe, you are activating your faith. Come on, somebody. Too many of you right now today, you walk around with dead faith and you blame the wrong person when you really need blaming yourself. The problem is you. I was like y'all one time before, blaming Jesus for everything. I even got mad at him a couple of times. I even cursed him out a couple of times. Now, as I sit back and look at it, the problem was never Jesus in the first place. The problem was me. And once I got correct, and once I got my mind right, I knew then who the problem was. The problem was me. And once I activated my faith, I've been on fire ever since. You can throw some water on me. I'm still going to be on fire. It ain't going to stop me because of my faith and my trust and my hope that I have in Jesus. That's why I stay hot. That's why I stay motivated. That's why Jesus is able to move in my life. It's because of my faith. That's why Jesus is able to use me. It's because of my faith. Jesus cannot use nobody if they don't have faith. Anybody can talk it, but Jesus knows your heart. Anybody can say it, but Jesus know your heart. Let Jesus examine your heart right now today so he can see that my son had faith, that my daughter had faith. Let Jesus examine your heart today. Are you willing to allow Jesus to examine your heart right now today? Because he's going to know. Do you really trust him or not? You can tell me anything. You can, tell, you can tell your next door neighbor anything. You can tell your family anything. You can tell your friends anything. But Jesus knows if you have faith. Because faith is what pleases him. Faith is one put the smell on his faith. Faith is the one that says, you know what? I want to do this for my son. I want to do this for my daughter. Because of your faith, Jesus knows your faith. Because it is Jesus who lives inside of you. So he knows if you got faith or not. He knows. When you got faith, trust and believe me, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus will be pleased with you. And you can ask him anything in his name, and he'll do it. Why do you think John 15, 5 say that if you abide in him, he'll abide in you. If you abide in his words and his promises, his words and his promises abide in you, that you can ask anything. And before Jesus gave that kind of power, he want to make sure, do you believe in him? Do you have faith? Jesus cannot give you something if you don't have faith. He said that you can ask anything in his name, that he will do it. And the only way that Jesus will do it is because of your faith. Come on, somebody, you ain't telling me nothing. You got to have faith for Jesus to answer you. 
You have to have faith so Jesus can guide and direct your footsteps. You have to have faith so Jesus can put you at the right place at the right time. You have to have faith so Jesus can use you. You have to have faith so Jesus can open doors. You have to have faith so Jesus can hook you up with the right connection and the right resource. You have to have faith so Jesus can open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing on you, my brothers and my sisters, that you ain't going to be able to receive it all. You got to have faith. You have to have faith. Point blank period. Faith without work is dead. If you got dead faith, you cannot please your father. You can't please him. You can talk to you turn blue, red, green, orange, or yellow. If you don't have faith, he is not impressed with mouth. He is not impressed with that. And the word of God tells us that in the book of Isaiah, a lot of y'all praising from your mouth, but your heart is so far from him because you don't have faith. That's why I said, let Jesus examine your heart today so he can see, do you have faith or not? And when Jesus examines your heart, he's going to say, oh, that's my son right there. Oh, that's my daughter right there. They got some faith. And you wonder why people are getting blessings? And you wonder why people's getting breakthroughs? You wonder why people's getting miracles? You wonder why people's getting used by Jesus? It's because they have faith. So you looking at somebody and you get mad while you ain't got nothing. You get mad while somebody else got it going on. The problem is the reason why they getting breaks. The reason why they getting blessings. The reason why they receiving miracles. The reason why things are going good in their life. Have you ever took the time out and considered that they have faith? Have you ever took the time out and considered to say they believing in something but nobody's believed in them? I want you to think about it. They had faith. Look at Bill Gates. Nobody believed in that man. But he had faith. Look at the guy who created Facebook. He had faith. Everybody that's successful right now today, they had that one thing. They pleased Jesus the most. What's faith? That's why they're so successful right now today. They had the one thing. They had faith and they stuck with Jesus the whole time. Regardless how dark it was, regardless of what people said about them, regardless how I many the weapon was forming, regardless what the enemy was doing, regardless what the haters were saying, the naysayers were saying, the doubter was saying, they had faith and they stuck it out with Jesus the whole time. Can you do that today, my brothers? Can you do that today, my sisters? Because at the end of the day, the problem always going to be you. It will never be Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I believe right now today. And I'm encouraging somebody today. Please activate your faith right now today. Activate your faith so Jesus can do a new thing into you. And that's what Isaiah 43, 18, verse 19 means. He said, forget about the past, forget about the former thing, so he can do a new thing. The only way that Jesus can do a new thing is with faith. Do you have enough faith so Jesus can do a new thing in your life? I believe you do today. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. By us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and your sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them or not. Prayer does help and prayer does change this thing. Continue to pray for me. I'm going to continue to pray for y'all. Always trust him. Always activate your faith. This is Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. Amen.